uh, we do about $2,500. So I already know five salespeople, $2,500 a sale, that's $12,500 a month. That's $150,000 a year in found revenue if I could just get you guys to make more phone calls. Would you give me three minutes to show you how I can do that? Hey everybody, I'm here with Jared Glant who is the president of Cardone Enterprises. Yes, sir. And I remember the first event I came to, I heard a story that uh, you you were, Grant told the story about how you were, um, you were I think you were new and you were, uh, you were making like a database of leads. <laughs> well, it wasn't a database. Yeah. It was like a notepad, a legal, no, no, pad, a legal <laughs> pad with names on it. <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. Um, and and then he was like, like, I'm just, I'm just so. When I came here at at at, at your office mm -hmm. to see your morning meetings, to see the the culture and the things you guys have built, mm -hmm. you know, I know that. Uh, I, I know how things go because I run a company, and sure. I know that you have the visionary usually, and then you have the integrator, and. You seem to be the guy behind making all the mechanics work, everything actually work, taking these visions and, and, and the Grant and, and Cardone Enterprises and all this and putting it into a machine that actually turns and the gears spin mm -hmm. and, the gear, and the gears run. And so that's why I wanted to interview you because yeah. here's the biggest thing that I want to get through in this interview is Grant Cardone and this whole operation, and I'm going to be frank here. In internet marketing, on mm -hmm. online marketing, he has been the only one. Because th there's a lot of people that sell online courses, trainings, sure. these workshops. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's face it, we all sell the same stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, we really do. Like, the same right? offer, yeah. The same lot, offer. Yeah. Not, not the same product, yeah, yeah, yeah. obviously, but the same, same online offer. Online courses, I mean, online free, courses, how to sell live more, workshops, how, masterminds, How coaching, to market yeah, more. Yeah. Now, if you look at the marketplace, you'll have guys that will... You have people that'll do decently well. They'll do like fifty to hundred grand a month. Mm -hmm. Then you're gonna have people who are upper echelon who do like five hundred to a million a month. Mm -hmm. And then you're gonna have like top top tier mm -hmm. who do two three million a month. Mm -hmm. Most I ever did in the month was like one point five. Yeah, and I had to do. I had to grind, man. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was yeah, like yeah. speaking on stage and doing <laughs> doing challenges. Yeah. And it was it was it a was a lot. A, it was yeah. a grind. Yet Grant, the one dude who literally sells the same stuff, right? Not the same product, but yeah. the same offer. Is doing hundreds of millions. Yeah, hundreds of millions. What is like overall? Why is this one person? It's not like there's two. It's not like yeah. there's three or five or a handful. It's one dude. Mm -hmm. Like one company is outselling all of us to a degree that is just astronomical. There's got to be a fundamental core thing y'all are doing differently than we're doing. Yeah, I mean, I think. Uh... And, and thanks for, for all that stuff. And I'm, I'm really excited to, to be doing this with you today. Um, you know, I think for, for me, when we look at, at our business, we never looked at ourselves as an internet marketing business. Okay. And, and we didn't start our business that way. You know, like I, you've heard the story, like from 2010, when I started to 2015, we didn't spend a dollar in advertising. Like the entire business in the beginning was grown making cold calls to businesses because we were selling a business training product. And so like this concept of selling people to the individual online, it was just a foreign concept to us. So like webinars and never did never did any of that this. stuff. We you went to conventions, we did cold calls, um, you know, we worked deals with like manufacturers and vendors, suppliers for uh, for the industry that we were in and 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 that was how we grew the business and we went from, you know, like two and a half million when I started uh, to probably uh, 2015, we probably did 18 million. And so that was all done with the phone call. Social media, so, so social you, media. So we were creating content on social media, but we had no, like a lot of guys in the space have been marketing online since like 2000, like the, the senior guys in the space. Um, like we, we, we didn't even start spending money until five or six years ago. Dude, <laughs> that's I, I kept telling Grant, I'm like, and, and it's so funny because Frank Kern, who's a, who's a dear friend of mine, um, I remember somehow I got onto his list and I saw this thing. It was it was 2010 because that's when because I started. Frank's upper echelon. He don't yeah, make you know, hundreds of yeah, no, and, and and I and I and I'm like, man, this guy did this webinar, and there's no way it was live, but was it? I'm like, what is this? And I'm like, what you know? And I find out, I'm like, it's an evergreen webinar. And I'm like, man, we ought to do one of these. Dude, it took, I, ta I talked to Grant about webinars for three years 
And then finally he got connected with Lewis Howes and Lewis Howes was like, oh yeah, you guys should do a webinar. And he's like, okay, I'll try a webinar. Thanks, Lewis. Um, <laughs> And, and, and then, and then it was like this thing, it was like, oh my gosh, you know, we made, you know, 80 grand in an hour. And then now we do, you know, multiple seven figures. So it's like, we, we are, we were learning this process from the reverse side. And so I think that's really why we've been able to grow because we were never seeking a lifestyle, you know, like a lot of people get into internet marketing because they want to start their own business. They want to be a coach. They want to, you know, be, be nimble, have choices, travel, do all these things. We never started the business with that in mind. And, and that's, that's big. Like mm -hmm. in, in, in the industry of starting your online business and selling courses, being a coach, it's all about work-life balance from yeah. the beginning, which as we both know, there is no balance when you're building. You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, and, and I think that, that there can be balance. But, but people have to make decisions in order to, right. they make sacrifices for it. So it's like, you know, can I go all in and, you know, like work 75 hours a week and explode something? Yeah, for sure. But if I'm looking for balance, then I'm going to work half that. And the only thing that changes is the time, right? You know, if, if you as Dan work 40 hours a week or you as Dan work 70 hours a week, where, when are you going to get more done? How are you going to grow faster? By putting more time in, period. Like, it's just like, you don't even have to get any better at what you do. You just spend more time doing it and you're going to get there faster. And so I think for people, when they're trying to find this idea of balance, um, it comes with sacrifices that need to be made. You can't say, I want to work four hours a day and then I want to have a hundred million dollar business because mm -hmm. those, those things don't really, they don't align. So you're saying like decide what the goal is and Yeah, I mean that, 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 yeah. that should be. Like I, I think people spend far too much time trying to figure out what they wanna do mm. rather than like where they wanna go. So I talk a lot about this, this exercise that I do on a regular basis uh, about creating your ideal life. Like I'm 39 years old right now. When I'm 60 years old, what do I want my ideal life to look like? What do I want my day to look like? Where do I travel? You know, what's my financial situation like? You know, what charities do I give to or churches or like, what are my kids doing? Like, like I, I want to paint this picture of where I want to go because the truth is where I'm going is more important to me, me personally. Some people may disagree with this. Where I'm going is more important than how I get there. And, and I, and I believe that, that people, they place too much importance on the, what they're doing and they don't spend enough time figuring out where they want to go or why they're doing it. And, and when you do that, it can cause misalignment because people could find themselves in an opportunity that they love, but it's disconnected from the thing that they actually want. Mm -hmm. Like, 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 let's just, I'm just going to say a number. Let's just say at 10 million, you have your ideal life because it funds everything you want to do, but they're in a vehicle where they're making 150 grand a year and they're not really growing out of that because they're stuck in this vehicle of something that they like to do or that they love to do. And ideally you'd find something where you're making a bunch of money and you love what you do, which is I'm fortunate enough to be in the situation and you are too, where it, it, they, they, they both cross up and they align. Um, but, but I think balance is relative to the person and to the outcomes that they're looking for in their life. Mm. Yeah, you know, I think a lot of people don't know what they want while they're doing it. Mm -hmm. e even me, like when I got, so my first two years in business, I, it's funny you mentioned webinars, I was using automated webinars mm -hmm. to make about two to two, $250,000 mm -hmm. a month yeah. net, yeah. net for two years. Yeah. And what happened was I had an, an amazing life. I, it literally just rolled in, it was yeah. all automated and I was chill. And then I started looking at other people and uh -huh. I was like, well, that guy's doing a million a month. Yeah. That guy's doing a million a month. Yeah. And I was like, I, I've got better products than him. I can do a million a month. Yeah. And then I went and I was like, all right, I want to do a million a month. Mm -hmm. And I realized that in order to do that, I needed to build a like, scale. I needed to build like a real company. And prior to doing that, I was, dude, I delivered pizza for seven years. Yeah. I'm from Florida. Yeah. Like we just like hang out and be degenerates. Yeah. You know, like we don't really, we're not business people. We're not, you know, we're just like, hey yeah. man, like you want to go to the beach? Yeah. <laughs> so, so, you know, for me, that was amazing. And then I just got competitive and I stepped into something that, you know, building a real business uh -huh. and we did it. We hit, you know, 800, a million, one, five, 800, one yeah, point yeah, one. Yeah. But we got stuck there because I just, you know, I, I never wanted to be that person that ran a company. 
Mm -hmm. And so again, and that just comes down to your choices. Like, like, and, and that's the hard thing that I think people, when they're, when they're trying to figure things out, um, if they're not focused on figuring out what they want, then mm-hmm. they start adopting the goals of other, other people. people. Yeah. And, and, and then so, you know, in some cases you just, it's part of life though, dude, like you got to figure shit out and it's not easy. Yeah. And, you know, you think you want one thing and you're running down that road and then uh, maybe that's not what you want. And then you got to pivot and adjust. And I think people, you know, again, you, they, they got to cut themselves some slack. Like you're not going to get the right decision every time, no. you know, like I've made so many bad decisions. And like, if I would have done things differently, I probably would be at 30 where I'm at at 39. And, and, um, but you know, like it, this is just my path. And so I think that people really ought to, th- that's why that ideal life exercise is so important because it's like, what do you really want? And I think people want freedom, like they want freedom of choice. Uh, like most people, like I've never been in a situation where I haven't had to work. Like, you know, like I've always had to work and I've always had to do whatever it took to make money. Like, and, and that, whether that was selling advertising or selling motorcycles, I, you know, I was a finance manager at my dad's dealership. Um, coming to make cold calls for some sales training guy. Do you think the goal should always be to make as much money as possible or do you think that's just... No, no. The goal should be to figure out what your life, what type of life you want to live and then reverse engineer how much money it costs to do that. And so like when I'm, when I think about 60 years old for me, I, you know, and, and, and for me again, I've never been in a situation where I haven't had to work, where I have a safety net. Like it's just my, I didn't come from money. Like I've always been the provider, like in our, my marriage, my wife, because of me, she had the opportunity to kind of find out what she wanted to do. And then, you know, next thing you know, she starts this coaching thing and, and it's going for a year, year and a half, not really taking off. And then, but because she doesn't need to make money, she just does doing it because she loves it because I was making money. Uh, next thing you know, it becomes something she's making, you know, 30, 40 grand. I remember a month, you talking you know? about, I remember you talking about her. Uh, in the in the workshop and, yeah. and about making videos and making yeah so it's like stuff. so so now she works she has created the life that she wants but it, it was able to happen because she didn't have to worry about money I've never been in that situation before yeah when you're under the gun it's different. well I mean you know like I you just have to do what you have to do yeah. and and so um, you know I just I just think for people they need to figure out they need to ideate on that ideal life. And it's gotta be something that gets them exciting. Like I want freedom, I want choice. It's 60 years old, I wanna not be able to work if I don't want to. And then the the exciting thing is, is when you paint this vision of what you want your life to be in this perfect scenario, then you're like, okay, well, what if I pulled it forward 10 years? And, and, And I wanted to get that at 50, then how does the math change? Because math is always, numbers were always a really easy thing for me to understand because there's no emotion in them, it's logic. Like it's, it's, and that's why I I understood sales from a a math perspective and marketing from a math perspective. It's like, you got to get more traffic. You got to get more conversions. You got to increase your average order value. Like, like it's all, all it is, is numbers. And the numbers tell you exactly what you need to do. Do you mind if we dive into that? Yeah, go ahead. So, so, so for those out there who look at companies Mm -hmm. like this and look at guys like you that run these companies, Mm -hmm. Because you're on another level. Like most people that try to start an internet company, even a decent one, mm-hmm. they don't know the stuff you guys know in terms of like really building an in, the infrastructure yeah. that you guys have. Yeah. Like th- this is a whole different level. This mm-hmm. isn't like hey, internet marketing. Like, yeah. this, like you said, you don't even consider yourself an internet marketing yeah. company. So my question, even though when you look at it, like as an internet marketer, yeah. as, as somebody who – is an online business owner. When I see Grant and I see your operation, I just see the highest level of what we do. Well, here, here's you know? here's here's a good a good like litmus test. If if social media went away, what would happen to your business? Right. And you and, talked about that. And yeah. and I know, like I already know, we know how to get deals. Like we have a we have 250 employees in this office. We just bought 250 thousand square feet in Scottsdale. We're probably going to have another hundred staff out there. Like there's only one way this is going. Like we'll do 150 million this year. Cardone Ventures, Cardone Ventures, which is a partnership that we started 
uh, about three years ago. Is that, uh, is that the total or is that just your, that's, your like info product sales that's, training? That's workshop? everything that's Grant Cardone Enterprises. Okay. And then Cardone Ventures, which is sort of like the, the ultimate ascension. We are buying businesses. We're partnering with companies. Right. It's it's executive education, recurring consulting services, like okay. actually operationally in businesses. So $150 million for just like training workshops. Yeah, may, maybe maybe one hundred. It, it, it will probably be a hundred and maybe 140, 145. So just... For transparency, okay. Got you. Um, <laughs> oh, is it but, you know, like, like, <laughs> like, we'll do, we'll do between ten and twelve million dollars a month. Cardone Ventures did ten point four million last month. So you know, so we, so to and get these you. are these are all businesses that like there. We have one hundred and twenty five staff at Cardone Ventures. We have two hundred and fifty people here. Like these are real companies that like you know. Again, if if social media dropped out, like we know how to build a database. We know how to get in front of people. We know how to make phone calls. The internet's just a tool, and so I would I, I would suggest I would suggest for anybody that has an internet business, part of the reason why we're, we're able to grow so much is because I've got fifty salespeople on the phones. So where an, um, an internet marketer, and and this is just what I see in my head, they they build a, a an online system, they build some ads, um, they build some automations, and they start putting quarters in on the front end. And, and hopefully they put a quarter in on the front and they get, yeah, you get three or four three out or on four the back, back whatever. Yeah. Uh, and then they just, they move on. So well, we're lazy. What happens, what <laughs> we're, happens, we're lazy. Well, <laughs> but, but, but it's, 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 it's the way that the business is designed. Yeah. So the difference between me is, is I do that same thing, except when somebody uh, uh, abandons carts, abandon, doesn't abandon cart, abandons the cart, we give them a phone call. When somebody, when somebody clicks a link on an email, they go into a bucket, a call bucket. When somebody opens an email, they go into a call bucket. But how do you so, get the phone number? Because you, you you call. Well, a lot. we have all the we have. I mean, we've got four million people in our database at this point. So. Do you get a phone number on a webinar registration? Uh, sometimes, mostly no. I mean, we, okay. we make it an optional an optional tag. Well, so that, that's what I want to ask. Like it, it seems, and mm -hmm. you got to correct me if I'm wrong here. It's because you're talking about ten million a month, mm -hmm. whereas the upper echelon's at one million a month. I mean, um, technically twenty. If you count both businesses, Car and then you yeah, add you add a sure. speaking business, <laughs> yeah. and then you you know you know so like there's, okay. a there's, lot of there's, yeah. freaking money, <laughs> way it's more than I a, make. A, a quarter B. <laughs> okay, yeah. so so here's the question: um, What the main mechanism, mm -hmm. right? It, this is just my percep perception. It seems that Grant writes a bunch of very small books, and some of them are larger books, and you run ads, and you you do social media, and you push towards those little products, right? Or it could be a trial to card on you, whatever. Low and ticket then it, front ends. Low yeah. ticket, like a mm -hmm. ton of them. And then you call those people relentlessly and sell them the upper stuff. Is that, a, if you were to just condense it, is that essentially the mechanism? Yeah, I mean, our, our biggest, our, our, I mean, our biggest sources of traffic are webinar, like live webinars, same stuff you do. Live webinars, challenges, evergreen webinars, book funnels, I mean, you know, that is, uh, and for, for uh, our corporate sales team where they're selling a B2B, it's a B2B sale. We're running, we're generating leads. You know, we generate 150 leads for the team a day. They're blowing through the leads, you know, uh, making phone calls, you know. So it's like every business has kind of a different, then we have a licensing division and then that's like a, a strategy call uh, front end, like, hey, join for a 15 minute free strategy call on okay. how to become a, a, a six figure coach. Oh my, you guys got that offer too? Mm -hmm. Jeez, <laughs> who makes all this stuff? Yeah. Is is it Grant? Like, it, I mean, I mean, dude, if I was a billionaire, I would be chilling. I would not be. I well, mean, but and, and, I, again, and, and I'm just before. just everything that I'm talking about that don't include real estate. So, oh, like, like when I tell you, like, where the money is, the money's in real estate. Like, so who creates when he all this when content, he makes though? when he makes you know when we look at we're like oh yeah we did two hundred fifty million in gross sales between all of the education businesses. And then I go over into real estate and he's like, yeah, I made, I made 80 or 90 million this year just on this. Like he's had, he's had deals. Like there, there was a deal that closed that he, he didn't, he refinanced a deal that he owned and pulled out like $104 million tax free. Like it's, it's ridiculous. Like, and so, so that, that, that also, it, it tells the story of, of I think where people fail because it's like you have all this 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 process of like, and Brandon calls it the ten elements of scale. So I'll have to see if I can run them off in order. It's 
strategy, sales, marketing, people, operations, finance, leadership, uh, technology, data, and then investment thesis. Those are the 10 elements of scale. And so what we've done is we've engineered the business, but then we also have that last step, mm. which is investment. And so that- You take the money from what All of the money goes in and it pours into reinvestment into assets that appreciate, provide cash flow, provide tax benefits. So like I heavily invest in real estate uh, because, and, 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 and if I look at my equity positions and deals right now, I've made more money in real estate. I'm probably sitting on 15 million in equity off of probably four, four million dollars, $4.2 million in cash invested in deals over the last 10 years. So like that's where things start multiplying and getting crazy because the money doesn't just go back into the business, but eventually the business doesn't need more money. Mm -hmm. Like the, now you need to take that money and go multiply it. And so that's where real estate, the real estate stuff comes that, out. That's an incredible strategy. Make a bunch of cash, dump it in. Make a bunch of cash, dump it in. So, and so when Grant says stay broke, yeah, that's what yeah, he means. Yeah. He's like, he's like, he'll tell you like, if you've heard money don't sleep, but it gets bored and bored money will always find something to keep itself busy. So it's like, that's why he can't, every year he goes broke. Like every year to this day. Just dumps it all in the real estate. All the cash accounts go into real estate. Wow. And then we that's start ballsy. over. Well, you know, cause you start at zero. Right. And well, now, well, you and now have your infrastructure. Well, yeah, yeah, but I mean, you know, like how much cash you think you're sitting on right now? Cash? I, I try to not sit on how probably, much? probably half a million. Okay, so you got 500, 500 grand in cash. If that went down to zero, would you have more or less urgency in your business? Oh, uh, you, yeah. dude, more. You'd, be, you'd, you'd, you'd I, feel some crunch on you, yeah. right? And so even at, at the highest levels, of, of that, the highest band where, you know, Grant's a billionaire, like this is- So you, you engineer that situation. Yeah, well you force yourself back into production. Most people would find that incredibly, I find it incredibly stressful. Well, yeah, yeah. but but it, 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 see, but, but I think that people, what people don't understand is that, is that lines, flat lines indicate death. Like mm -hmm. flat lines in a business, mean that you're you're going backwards you're actually losing and and so i think people get to this 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 lid or this ceiling where they feel like oh i'm i'm good now and that lid is determined by the influences of their life so if you don't have anybody around you like tell me your head didn't get blown off after sitting in a room with grant for a day yeah i mean he was it, it, your thing just gets so much bigger because you got somebody that's dude, that, that, that 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 is it, it elevates your perspective to a whole new his, level his, his whole because what, what i realized was that he did not care about the little idiosyncrasies mm -hmm. like when he had the influencer mastermind yeah. he brought like the world's best internet marketers yeah. into one room yeah and he's like yeah like what's a cart close like, yeah, yeah and i yeah, thought yeah, it was yeah, funny because yeah. he's like why would you close the cart yeah, Sell yeah, them, yeah you know yeah, and we're yeah, like yeah. and we're like you're the billionaire yeah. We feel like idiots right now yeah. because we're like, oh, you know. And one of the biggest things he said that, that got across to me uh -huh. was he said the people that have the most money have the least amount of time. Yeah. So when a lot in, in, in online marketing, a lot of times we will do a one hour webinar mm -hmm. and we won't tell anybody what we're offering until the very end. Yeah. And basically what he was saying was like, all the people that w were easily going to pay you were like, oh, cool, I'll buy. They're gone. Yeah. They're le they've left. That's you why know? we. That's why we make offers, and this goes against like right at the traditional beginning. wisdom. We won't get into the full stack of the offer, but we will yeah. introduce the offer in the beginning, and we'll offer some type of, of bonus for them to like a fast action bonus. You know, be like, hey, for the first hundred people that sign up, we're going to do this super cool thing. Let me ask you this: right now, well, not right now, but in general, there's always been this, this, and I I, I love the going against mm -hmm. the grain in internet marketing in online. Oh, just give value, give tons of value. Don't, mm -hmm. don't pitch, don't sell, don't, you know, build value. And look, building value is amazing. Like yeah. you gotta give value, but it's this whole like don't sell thing until later or don't sell until you've built trust with your audience. And it's like, dude, I remember when I started my business, I was like, I, I need to make money. Like yeah. I got bills to pay, yeah. I can help you. Yeah. And when I help you, you're gonna, be in a lot better position than yeah. without my help. So let me just sell right away. Yeah, the idea is to do both. Right, you both. know, like yeah. like the idea is that you provide value and you make offers. Immediately. And the, and the higher quality value you provide people, the more permission you have to make offers. 
Yeah. And like we make a lot of offers and it we don't, you know, and it, it offends you some email, people. You email it offends some people, but uh, in most cases, those people are people that they, they don't want to buy anything. Yeah. They just wanna they just wanna consume your free content. I was at the relationship mastermind. Yeah, dude. dude how was dude. it? Well, <laughs> bro, like I was in there. I swear to God, one of your sales your, your salespeople were crawling the room. Mm-hmm. Like, I got hit up. I got pitched on something at least every break. Every yeah. not yeah. even every break, yeah. dude. Like every ten minutes. Yeah, I'm like trying to eat, and they're like da 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 da. You know, yeah. Cardo Capital. Hey, you know, da, da, da. Yeah. and I, I, at a point, I was like, bro, you guys pitched me on everything. Yeah, like, I, I don't know, you know. And they were pitching me on like, you know, private coaching with Grant and the relationship Mm -hmm. thing. And most people, most people would sit there and get offended. They'd be like, oh my gosh, I'm getting pissed. Yeah, so, so, so. I thought it was great. There's a, there's a big, there's a decision that people have to make in business, traditional business, uh, like it just in life. Like, do you want to lose opportunities because you push too hard or do you want to lose opportunities because you don't push hard enough? Exactly. And, and, and that's a fundamental decision that you have to make because that will determine your ability to deal with, you know, oh, I don't like that. Well, that's what you guys sell sales because, and, 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 and the thing is, is like, I know more often than not that helps us instead of hurts us. Are people going to get offended because you, you, you sell for sure. But are you also, are you also going to take people who were on the fence that needed to be leaned into a little bit in order to, to make the move. Um, are you going to get those people to say yes? Yes. And so you end up, you end up getting the, the easy, the low hanging fruit business, you know, knock the tree off the fruit falls. Yep. Like you get the easy stuff, but then you get the people because of the press, you get the people that are on the fence and, and too often people aren't willing to lean in. They're not willing to ask again. And, and in most, most cases, People don't trust their self to make a decision. They don't trust their ability. And so you have to continue to show up for them until they say yes. Well, plus you're selling sales training. How can you get mad at somebody? Yeah. Who's, it's like, I want to learn sales, and, but you're selling me too much. Like, yeah, but, how can but you get again, mad at that person? Again, dude, that goes back to people. You know, we were talking about content in this workshop yesterday. I'm like, look, you've got to make a decision. Like uh, if your business is doing 300 grand a year right now and you want to do 5 million, how many people would like that? Everybody's hand goes up. Okay. Uh, would you be willing to do whatever it takes to do $5 million a year in sales? Raise your hand. Oh yeah, I'd be willing to do whatever it takes. Okay, everybody get your phone out right now. We're going to shoot a video. And then people are like, they freeze. No, that's awesome. But it's, and it's not just, it. it's not just content, but it's like all of these little decisions that add up to the things that are the, they're the foundation of how we operate as a business. And that's why we have 250 employees. It's because we push 250 employees? in this office. We push, in this yeah, we push and we lean in and like, so, so it's, 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 it's bringing all of those little things that you do together on top of a brand, on top of a kick-ass product that works. Like salespeople aren't going to press if every day they're not getting emails and we're not getting videos in from clients going, dude, this saved my life. It changed my business. I went from struggling just to get by to $8 million a year in sales. You guys are lifesavers. Like, like that that shit uh, like will light you up yeah. and it gives you more drive because you have conviction in the outcome. And so when you're selling somebody, like they, they don't know. They, like if they knew what you were gonna do for them and they knew how the product was gonna work, everybody would say yes. But you so, gotta get them. So the, yeah, well you gotta get them there. But the level of conviction that you have and belief you have in your product is gonna be the number one thing that drives them and influences them to move towards you. And everybody has met captivating people. And, and when people speak with a lot of conviction, um, it, 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 it inspires people. It actually gives people certainty. Because they believe in their product, right? Like if, you don't, like if you really have a great product mm-hmm. and you believe in it that much, you should do everything in your power to sell that product to as many people as possible because it's going to help them. Well, we, we, we um, like one of the things that we teach people is it's like, you know, um, people like to talk about customer service and it's like, we tell, we train our guys that like when you're, when you close a deal with a customer, that is how you serve the customer. Like your customer service is not being nice. is not having a great attitude is not saying yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. Thank you. Like you're, you're, you serve the customer in this world. You serve the customer when they say yes to your product, because that is how they get the outcome that they need. 
And so when we're pushing for the close, we're doing it for the customer. You know, like, and, and I think that's a, 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 again, a fundamental shift that a salesperson or a business owner can make when they're looking at their product is, is that if the customer has a problem and they need to get it solved and they're willing to pay money for it, and you believe that you have a great product or service that can solve that problem and you don't press on them, you allow them to go buy from somebody else. Like just walk through this, like, okay. I believe in my product, I believe in my service, I believe that I am worth more than other people in the marketplace. So if Dan goes elsewhere to buy my product and he pays the same money or less, he is gonna be in a worse situation because he's not gonna get the problem solved, he's not gonna get the service I can de deliver, uh, he's not gonna get the, to leverage the experience that I have to make sure that the job gets done right the first time. And so now you start building this case to go like, oh man, I can't let him do this, I can't let him make this mistake. And now I'm thinking about you and not me. Some salespeople go, I'm gonna get a commission right now. Mm. And when you sell like that, the buyer knows. The uh, energy. You you, when it. you sell like that, like you'll push harder for the customer to say yes because it's the right thing for them, even though they don't know it, than you will for yourself in your own mm. desire to get a commission. You know? That's the humility and the genuineness of your of your pitch changes. Sp speaking of 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 acquiring customers mm -hmm. and selling to them. A lot of people watching this right now, they don't have the infrastructure mm -hmm. that obviously Grant Cardone has. And Grant Cardone didn't have the infrastructure that he has now back in the day. Mm -hmm. So if you were to answer this question of, okay, if you took all of this away, if you if you strip this down to the bare bones, mm -hmm. you didn't have all these lights yeah. and studios, and you could only focus on one way to acquire customers, Maybe that's selling a book with Facebook ads and then calling them. Maybe mm -hmm. that's doing a web, whatever. If you could just focus on one and you had to strip all the others away, you could only do one, what would it be? Yeah, I mean, I would focus on um, creating a, a customer. So whether that customer was a, a book buyer on a free plus shipping offer for eight bucks, uh, whether that's somebody that goes through a webinar and they buy a 197 product or a 997 product or whatever, like those are the customers that you can ascend into other things, like they're buyers. Like that's uh, somebody who buys something from you once is more than likely to buy something from you right. another time, right? So um, it's two things. I would focus on acquiring a customer, a paying customer for the lowest cost possible. And then I would focus on having an offer uh, stack that will allow me to increase the value of that customer over time. So, um, you know, having, having, having the proper way to monetize your customers determines how aggressive you can be on the front end. You understand this, right? Mm -hmm. And so, and I was just in this morning in the, in the workshop, as I was getting it started, I was saying, you know, we, we didn't start selling a $25,000 mastermind until we offered it. We didn't start selling hundred thousand dollar coaching until we offered it. We just created a million dollar offer in Cardone Ventures and we sold one. So it's like, until you, and you, your, your, your offers need to be able to drive your customer deeper and deeper and deeper into what you do. And until you start pricing products, uh, it, you start putting high price products out there, nobody's going to buy them. Yeah. Million dollar offer. That's, and so, that's incredible. You know, and then, and then uh, again, like if it, if it came down to uh, going through LinkedIn, like this is how I started. I'd go through LinkedIn. I'd Google, like I, I, I'd, I'd create a filter for position and industry. I'd make a list of names. I'd literally, I'd make all these names in the company that they work for. And then I'd go on Google and I'd Google the phone numbers of the office. And then just call. I'd send them, a, I'd send them a message on LinkedIn and then I'd, 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 I'd build a call list. Like before CRM, before any of that, like that was my, and so I'd make, you know, three or 400 phone calls a day and I'd run through my legal pad and I'd cross through people, set an appointment, do this, you know, presented the product, you know, uh, said no, go jump off a bridge. Uh, you know, said yes, send me a contract. Like, and I, I literally had legal pads. Like, I had stacks. You could of literally legal build pads. this whole thing. You could build it to a couple million dollars a year just cold calling. Is what you're saying? We did. Dude, we we nice. did when nobody knew who Grant was. Now imagine all the people out there. Mm -hmm. Th this is what gets now me. cold calls. Let me just tell you, like, cold calls are not the sexiest thing. No, marketing. Hate marketing. If you have if you have money to spend, like the first priority should be marketing. Because marketing can create scale and create can create attention and, and but like for some people getting started they don't have money, and so like you have to create content because that's free if you're doing it yourself it's free, 
Um, and you have to make calls to people. You gotta DM people, you gotta reach out. Like that form of marketing, like the outreach with a cold call isn't, a cold call itself isn't a sales tool. It's a marketing tool. It's a tool to get out of obscurity. Now, what you say once you're on the call becomes a sales a sales activity. But getting them on the phone. But getting them on the phone is just a, the lowest level of, of marketing because you're getting out of obscurity on a one-to-one -one basis. Because that's what marketing is. It's getting attention. It's getting people to know you. Do you find it weird that people, because you know that a lot of people do this, mm -hmm. they will spend thousands of dollars on marketing and sales training on how to build a business. They'll buy software. They'll go to events. Mm -hmm. They'll do all, and then they still won't get off their ass and do anything. Mm -hmm. Or they'll get overwhelmed and they'll, you know, procrastinate. But they won't just pick up the phone yeah. and call somebody and try to sell them something. Yeah, like it, like to me that's crazy because it, it's you could literally just learn how to sell over the phone. Just that you could pick up the phone, call a company or a business or somebody and sell them something. Versus, you know do all this stuff that you're not going to do anyway. And a lot of people do do it. I did it, mm -hmm. you know, and I made a multi-million dollar business out of it. But when I saw all the other people, the 99% of people who just didn't do anything. Well, you know, here's the thing. You know, it, I mean, that one skill can when, just change when everything. Somebody, when somebody has to pick up a phone and they have to sell something to somebody that they don't know, even if, even if it's a lead, sometimes people get hung up. They get call reluctance on calling leads. And these are people that have expressed interest. And so it's like there's all kinds of things that go on in people's heads based on society or how they were raised right. or whatever. But, um, but I also believe that like there's tricks. So when I came to work for Grant, I had never made a cold call before. I always sold face-to-face. -face. I sold advertising for Auto Trader. Drive around town. I'd walk into a business. Hey, what's up? How you doing? You know, oh, hey, Jared. You know, I, I had a good attitude. Like I had, person, had personality-based success in sales, which is what I think – a lot of people actually see as like a salesperson are just people that their personality disposition makes them, you know, a little bit more extroverted and, and, and they don't, they don't do well in sales because they understand the fundamentals and the process. They do well in sales because they're just naturally good with people. And, and in fact, like analytical people and people that aren't like that are oftentimes the best salespeople because they understand the, 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 the mechanics of how the deal works. And, and so like when you're getting in the beginning, you're trying to make calls, like you have to address the issues that you have in your head. Like one is expectations. Most of the time when you make a phone call, a sales call to somebody that's not expecting your call, they're not even going to answer. And, and, and so you're just got to expect, I'm going to make a hundred calls and I'm going to talk to four people or, uh, I'm going to make a hundred calls. I'm going to talk to 20 receptionists. They're going to send me through to voicemails and one of 20, or they're going to send me through to the person I need to talk to. And one of 20 is going to actually answer. The other 19 are going to go to voicemail. So it's like, like people get all psyched out about this. It's like, you know, the Jack in the box. Doo -doo 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 yeah, yeah, and then it pops out. So they, they are, there's this anticipation that like the Jack's going to pop out. And, and what happens when you're making calls is it's like, du -du 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 you're making call, 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 call. You don't know when they're going to answer. And then somebody answers and you're like, oh shit, like, what am I going to say? Um, and so first thing is you have to understand that in most cases, they don't answer the phone. Right. The second thing that, that you have to understand is um, it takes time to get great at it. And so you have to be willing to be terrible at it. And you have to be willing, like, like I would have targets for how many times I got hung up on. Um, I make a joke, but it's not really a joke because it really happened. I was on calls and they were so, it was so bad that I literally hung up on myself. Like I beat them to it because it was just, I was like, fuck, I messed that call up. And I just hang up on myself. And so like, it's this process that you have to work through. Like the first call you make is going to be uh, terrible. You're not going to get great at it. You're going to fumble all over your words. You're, you know, somebody's going to hang up on you. But like the idea is that you, 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 I had to trick, I had to like, I had to like trick myself into making a lot of calls. And for me, that was, I wanted targets for hangups. Uh, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to be terrible on 10 calls a day. Like, and so I actually started looking at the failures as an indication is a win. <laughs> totally flipped it around. So like me failing on the call was actually a win because I made a call 
and I failed. And then what happened is it's like jumping into the ring with, uh, if you've never boxed before with a professional boxer, it's like, you're going to, you're going to be all nervous. Yeah, you you're going to get out. in there. You're going to get hit once and you're going to fall down. And then, and then you're still going to be nervous. Your heart's going to be racing. You know, your pulse coming out of your throat and then you're going to get up there and then you're going to get in and then he's going to hit you the same punch again. And then you're going to do this, go through this whole thing again. And then you're going to get up and the guy's going to come at you. And then you're going to know that that punch is coming from this side. And you're going to have the ability to telegraph it a little bit. Maybe you kind of lean out of the way so it doesn't hurt as bad. And so that's the same thing with causes this evolution. Because before you know it, you know when the punch is coming, you know when his body's going to shift before he throws. And then you can get out of the way or you can block the punch. And so it's this process of, of understanding that because cold calls are compressed like there's so much that happens in so little time and seconds are like minutes uh, on a call. And so people don't understand, like here's another trick. Like when I was making cold calls and somebody would say, I'm not interested. Mm -hmm. Like most people just hang up. But you know, we have this sales principle that we teach. It's like always agree with the customer, whether you're in the close, you're in the deal, whatever. When they say something, just always agree with them. Hey, completely understand, I'm with you, I hear you. You're not the first person I've heard that from. And so when we teach people on, on the phone when they're making cold calls, and I'll just full transparency, we don't have to make as many cold calls as we used to because we've got a 4 million person database and our marketing engine is firing. But when you're getting started, you have to. Yeah. So when they'd say, uh, I'm not interested, instead of just going, okay, thanks, and hanging up, I'd say, you know, hey, I completely understand. I do this all day long. You're not the first person that said that, but let me ask you. And so what, it, what that was, it was like a, it was a standard statement that required no energy or effort for me to think about because I drilled it over and over and over again. And so what, what it did is when you start talking immediately after an objection, uh, the person on the other end is, is, is like, they receive the communication back. <laughs> like most of the time they don't immediately hang the phone up. Even when they say, I'm not interested, they don't immediately hang the phone up. Right. They're waiting for you to throw something back. I usually throw back. Why not? Yeah. I'm here. Yeah. You want to so, talk to me? So, so it's like, you, so you make this, you make this call and it's like, Hey, I'm not interested. Hey, look, I completely understand. I'm with you. I do this all day long. That's the first thing most people say, but let me ask you. And then you go right into a qualifying question. You've actually gotten the greeting of the sales process out of the way already. And now you can drop into fact finding and learn more about the customer. And so like doing those little things like that gave me completely understand. Uh, I do this all day long. You're not the first person I've heard that from, but let me ask it. Dude, that buys you three seconds to figure out where you're going to pivot. And ideally you, you have this that you're drilling and you're role playing and you're practicing every single day, but it gets to the point, like, like you saw our guys, it's Saturday. We're here shooting this on a Saturday. We have probably 25 of our salespeople here. They're, they do sales training and they work, you know, a couple hours on Saturday. They put in extra time just so they can get better faster. Right. Um, the idea is that when you're training and you're drilling and you're role playing, it's not that you know the material. That's where people fail with training. They, they learn something. They learn something so that they can go, I know it. But what you have to do is you have to learn and you have to train. You have to educate. You have to get to the point where you know it so well you can never forget it. Second nature. It's without even thinking. It's, it comes out of your mouth. Mm. Because then that gives you the ability to elevate above the process and direct and control the process. It's a weird thing that I just, this visualization that I have in my head of like, when, when what I'm saying can become almost like automated, it gives me the ability to think strategically about where I'm taking the call without having to pause because communication lag drops certainty. When you start s slowing down your pace of communication, people lose confidence in you. When you start bumping into things like, like your words and you're moving around in the call, like people lose certainty. When you start out a call really fast with a lot of pace and then you start backing off once you running, start running into objections, people lose certainty on the call. Certain pe uncertain people don't make decisions to buy anything. Right. They make yeah. decisions to hang up. And so that's why like the drilling and the practicing and the role playing, like getting that so it's second nature so that it just happens without you even thinking about it is so important because it elevates certainty with the customer. And that, that's the thing, you know, no, nobody with money wants to talk to a jack. Like nobody with money wants to feel like they're, 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 um, they're lowering themselves. Like their time's valuable. 
And it's like, their time is money, right? And so it's like, I'm, I'm investing time and money in this call. Am I doing it with somebody that's even worth it? Or is this gonna be a completely failed, I've made, I don't know, I don't know, 100,000 phone calls, I don't know, a lot. Um, and and, and you, can, you can feel when somebody will actually just respect you because of how you're handling the call and they'll give you time and an opportunity just because of that. Like if you can get past I'm not interested in the, in the beginning part of the call, mm -hmm. that right there for most business owners, they're gonna be like, okay, you got some game, what do you got? So let me ask this, I think a lot of times people, they have trouble opening the call. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, in, in, in my industry, a lot of people do sell, like you said, mm -hmm. low ticket products and you could call the, and they don't, they just mm -hmm. don't call them. But let's just say mm -hmm. that you sold, you, you ran some sort of social ad, paid traffic, and you sold a book or mm -hmm. you sold a cheat sheet or you mm -hmm. sold something that's, you know, 20 bucks, 40 bucks, seven bucks, whatever. Yeah. And you got the phone number. And yeah. now you're like, all right, this person, they bought my book on how to lose weight. They bought mm -hmm. my book on, or whatever it is, my pamphlet. I can call this person. I have their phone number. Yeah. When you pick up the phone mm -hmm. and you call them, how do you open? Yeah, so, um, well, like the best place to go is to, to pick up where they left off, which is the, the purchase that they made. Okay. So, you know, hey, congratulations. I saw you picked up this book. You know, this is Jared from Grant Cardone's office. Uh, I just wanted to reach out and say congratulations on picking up this book. It's going to be amazing. You know, we, we've done a lot of research putting together this blah, 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 right. blah, blah. And uh, we've had so many students be successful with it. I just want to introduce myself, uh, let you know that I'm going to be your contact here in the office, by the way. And then I'm moving to qualifying the customer because I need to find out who they are. Because who they are is going to determine where I put them. You guys say how many salespeople do you have? Yeah, that's one of the questions we have. Yeah, for you, for you. yeah. By the way, do you have a sales team? How many salespeople do you have? You know, um, and then you get into the sales conversation. You know, hey, what are they struggling with the most right now? Oh man, you know, I don't know. Well, if you did know, what 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 would it, what would it be? <laughs> if you, you didn't, know, I love you that. Didn't, if yeah, if you, know, if you did know, be? what would it be? Oh, that's um, great. Because that's that. The no answer is the you know, uh, uh, people say that asking questions controls the sale, but Grant says getting answers controls the sale. So, so when somebody says, ah, I don't know. Yeah, but if you did, what would it be? So you, you, now, you, I, I, dude, I don't, I don't know. Dude, it, let me just, if you had to guess, if you had to guess, like what was one thing? Like what's one thing that's keeping you up at night, man? Like what's one thing you thought, man, if my guys could do this better, uh, I'd pick up an extra, an extra deal per salesperson. Now, now, here, now, now here's where you start getting strategic in the call because if he said he's got five salespeople and I say, would it get you an extra deal, uh, a salesperson? What's one thing that would get you an extra deal, a salesperson? Uh, you know, they probably need to make make a few more phone calls. What do you guys, what do you guys, um, what's your average uh, revenue per sale? Uh, we do about $2,500. So I already know five salespeople, $2,500 a sale. That's $12,500 $12, a month. That's $150,000 a year in found revenue. If I could just get your guys to make more phone calls. Would you give me three minutes to show you how I can do that? Oh, that's great. That's Cause great. there ain't no place that 150 grand belongs other than in your pocket. <laughs> you in front of a yeah. computer right now? And then you and then you move them into the call. So then will you take them onto the computer? It, yeah. Right. So so we would. You know, back in the day, it was you know we, we didn't even use Zoom back in the day. Like check this out. So we were demoing a SaaS product and uh, our online university, and um, we we didn't use Zoom. We had them go to the site. We had them log in. This was so terrible because you have no control over. They are engaged in the in the call because they're driving but they start clicking on a bunch of stuff. And, but I knew, the, I knew the program so well. I knew the product so well. I knew the demo so well. I knew the content so well that I used to do, because I was in LA at the time, just a little tangent. I lived in LA um, and after I like really leaned into like, I gotta make this work, um, I'd be getting the office at 6 a.m. every day because that's when East Coast business is open, nine o'clock. And so I'd come in at 6 a.m. in the morning and I'd work till six or seven at night and clean up uh, West Coast also. But I got so good at, at the demo, I could make phone calls in my car and demo people the product in my car. <laughs> so now we use Zoom and we do screen shares and we use Dex and we do all that stuff. But back in the day, it was just like... So you show them the product. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, imagine for a second. I'm just, I'm just trying to get into my world. And, and today, today we, do, we, do, we do a deck presentation rather than a... a like, like a little mini webinar, like a stack. Well, like just slides in a PowerPoint. Like, slides hey, you know, this is the, you know, this thing, this is the problem we solved, these are the features Do you of the think program. that works better than just showing the product? Um, it, it allows us to have a, a, a more controllable 
presentation of the product. It's really from a management perspective. Like yeah. it allows us Scale to be like, okay, look, all you have to do is talk through this slide. Like, <laughs> everything is laid out there. Because then when you start getting into scale, now you've got to start thinking about how to how to create success for anyone, for, any, any exactly. Employee. Because yeah. you know, in the beginning, when we were doing it like that, it would take nine months for a salesperson to like really start actually like producing. Which is, dude, that's a really slow, painful way to grow the company. Yeah. So now we got it down to like 60 days and we cre actually created a, a secondary team, an incubator style team to come in where we can hire people now with very little sales experience. They got good attitude, they're, te they're coachable, uh, they want to make money. There's something that's driving them inside to want to aspire to do more. And they see what we're doing here that is this big opportunity. And so we have a team where they can come in and they can make eight grand, you know, 10 grand within two months, three months and yeah, get, get up to that consistently. And then on that team, like I got guys on that team, it's, we call it like our, our CSR team. Um, but I got a guy who's probably going to make 400 grand this year and he's been with us for two years, two and a half and, years. And is he mainly just calling leads, calling leads, calling mm -hmm. leads? Wow. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. And you know, nobody, nobody selling does tickets, that. selling mentoring, selling, but that's what I'm saying. That's because that's where... You you said lazy, but that's just what we know. I feel that's lazy just, after. <laughs> that's just what we know for business. Like we know that like if you if you have a bucket, uh, a, a fifty five gallon drum, and the only thing you're doing is 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 scraping off the top of the drum. Like dude, that there's there's still fifty four gallons underneath that. Oh man, that's that, such that a you're analogy. not getting to. Ah. And, and it takes a little it takes a little bit of work to get down there. It's a little low. You maybe got to like lean up into it and get your arm really far down there. But there's still gold in them hills. That's man. such a great analogy. So dude, so that's what that's what the, that's what people get you. And so if you're not willing to hire people, then you're always going to struggle growing to, to having the scale that we have because we just continue to hire more people. Because we know that if we can make, if we can hire one person who can take five percent of all of the 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 didn't purchase, uh, didn't complete the webinar, open the email, click the link on the email, like if we can create call lists and I can have a person cleaning all that up, and I'm not relying on a retargeting ad, then we're gonna crush it. Yeah, by a company that could just shut you down or whatever. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. I know you probably have to go because we've been here for a minute. Yeah. Can I ask you one final yeah. question? Okay. And this is this is my question mm -hmm. because my my new company we've talked about mm -hmm. it. We're all remote. Mm -hmm. The whole thing is remote. All of our salespeople are remote. Our sales managers, everything is remote. Mm -hmm. You guys seem to be very focused on in-house culture. Mm -hmm. Meaning, I mean, I, I saw back there. You walk. We walked in here to do this interview. There was a group of people. I don't. I don't know if they were salespeople or what. Over here. Yeah. Over yeah. That's here. our sales. Well, yeah. That's half of our sales. And team. like as we walk by, mm -hmm. you're just like, all right, let's go, let's get yeah. it. Like it's just this. You can't. There's something that you can't. There's some things you can't do remotely. So my mm -hmm. question to you is, if you wanted to build a hundred million dollar company, right, and you really wanted to build it, how critical do you think it is to have an actual physical office with the managers and the owners and the employees and everybody coming to the office every day like how critical is it yeah this is this is a this is an interesting question for me because like i know what having people in front of you does and some people need that um but other people don't and so like for us in our business like i said we're opening an office in scottsdale we're gonna hire people to be in that office but some at some point next year we're gonna play around with a remote sales team because i know that whenever we run campaigns to hire people um like i'll i'll i i posted this thing on instagram and it was um we have about 50 salespeople, and 39 of them are over 100 grand for the year already and that's this was at the beginning of of the month or end of last month and so year to date they're already over 100 grand top guy was at 440 or something like that uh, with still two months to go. So like I post that and I say, Hey, if you want a sales job, hit the link, you know, hit, hit you know, hit me with a DM. And then I get hundreds of messages and I just have an, uh, an, uh, you know, response, you know, like, can you move to Miami, Scott Stale, or are you looking for something remote? And we probably got, I don't know, 1700 cause Grant reshare reposted it. We probably got 1700 people that responded and 1200 of them wanted remote. 
So there's such an opportunity there for people because of this big shift that's happened because of COVID. But the other thing to think about with COVID that people miss that, that is deceiving is people had to go remote after they had already worked for companies. They had already onboarded in person. They already mm. got to have the culture piece That's built in. Point. They already had their relationships with coworkers. They already knew the job that they had. So people are like, oh yeah, COVID, it was started this great thing. I'm like, but it was, it's, it's a false, it's a false uh, report of, of what remote, starting a remote company and building remote culture actually is. It's not a good uh, test for it. Uh, it's, it's, it's proof that people can be productive once they are onboarded. And so what we're engineering right now is a, a, a remote process where for my lowest level sales team, cause that's really the area where like, cause we could add a hundred salespeople tomorrow, but I can't do that if they all need to be in Miami and, and, and Scottsdale helps out some, but the way to do that is to hire remote salespeople, but I have to get them on our program. So we're working a plan where for the first 90 days, we're actually funding this is again, this is investment. We're going to pay for them to come out here. We're going to pay for them to be in a hotel for a week. We're going to be, have a, a sep, uh, we're building out a different training curriculum for them. And right now we're deciding between two weeks, two weeks on, two weeks off, two weeks on, two weeks off for the first 60 days, or one week, uh, at the beginning of the month for the first 90 days. And they're paid, they'll be employees, uh, you know, just as if they, they worked here in the office, but we're gonna be piloting a, a process to train and onboard those people and put them into that incubator sales role. And most people that wanna work remote, I won't say all of them, but people that are, that's more desirable to, um, in a lot of cases, they're, they're, they, they have some skill, like they've done this before, like you open up to a, actually a higher quality candidate. Um, mm. You know, they, they maybe got restricted a, by the yeah, well they, geography. You know, like I, I, somebody who's 32 years old or 33 years old that's been selling for 10 years, that's making 125 or 150 grand a year, that has two kids and he lives in Kansas City, Missouri, is not going to uproot his family to move to Miami. Right. Maybe Scottsdale, but if I could show him an opportunity where he can make 400 from home, boom. So you, Even you if that might means have been missing out on talent by only doing it in house. 100%. Hmm. But 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 I'm not convinced in the process to onboard and build culture remotely, remotely. yet. I'm not convinced of that yet. Now there's a new why, why do you think that is? Like what what makes you say that? Do, like so like you know when you date a girl, hmm. like when you first you go on a first date. Okay. And then you know you figure out however long it's going to take for you to go on another date. Mm -hmm. There's time, right? Like yeah. you go maybe a week or something or two weeks. You go out on another date. And then like maybe after that, you know, uh, you, 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 you know, a week and then you go on another date and then maybe like, Hey, you want to go do this or grab this. And then it's a couple days. And the next thing you know, the, the frequency of, of your touch starts speeding up and the relationship starts developing faster. Uh, the same thing I believe happens with online and on and, and culture building online is because of the lack of frequency, it takes, it's going to take longer to do that. And like, just as, a, as an example, uh, my wife, when we first started dating, she lived in Philly and I lived in Miami. And I won't go into all the details of the whole story, but um, we basically, she came down for New Year's, it was really like our first date, like New Year's weekend. And um, and and so, we, you know, we, we hung out, it was great, went to a party, it was awesome. She went home um, and then I'm like, oh man, I'm in love with this girl and she lives in Philly, what am I, what were you thinking? And then I'm like, whoops. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then I was like, okay, well, um, you know, so we were, you know, we're texting, talking, whatever. And I'm like, Hey, you know, I'd love to have you down again. And then she's like, what about, uh, this was new year's, right? So what about Valentine's day? And I was like, okay, great. That's February. Okay. So it's like a it's month, and a few weeks yeah. or whatever. I'm like, okay. Uh, yeah, let's do it. And then like a week later she hit me up and she goes, Hey, I'm thinking about another trip. And at this point, I'm like, I'm in love with this girl. I already called the shot that I was going to marry her before I met her. I told my guy, I was like, look at this. I, sh I showed her Facebook page. I was like, I'm going to marry this girl. And then we went on our first date. And then she went back. We, we set up the February uh, Valentine's date. And then she called me like a week later and said, hey, I'm thinking about making a trip down. What do you think? And I'm thinking she's going, dude, after Valentine's Day, she's already stacking the next one. I'm like, I'm in. And then, um, <laughs> and then she goes, I want to come down this weekend. Boom. I'm like, I'm in. 
So she comes. <laughs> she comes down at the same time. A um, a um, a big storm, a, like a nor'easter or something, blew through the northeast, and so trains were down, planes were down. Like she was stuck. She couldn't get back. I was going to New Orleans for a conference. I was going to be gone for a week. We we're doing this thing with Entrepreneur Magazine, and then we went to this this big convention for like four or five days. And so she's like, I, I went to the airport. She called me and she's like, hey, my plane, uh, my flight got canceled. I'm stuck here. And I'm like, okay, well, you can go back to my building and you know, you can just stay at my place for, for a couple of days or whatever. Uh, I said, or you can come and fly to New Orleans. So the like second or third week of the relationship, she came with me. Her flight kept getting canceled back. It was like a sign. And we Are you spent, sure she didn't do that on purpose? Well, maybe. The whole week, we ended up spending a week together. Like oh, wow. a couple weeks into the relationship, we spent a week together. And over the course of that time, we're eating breakfast together every day. We're going to lunch together. We're walking around town together. She's coming to work with me. Like, like all of this condensed connection time and Conversion. the relationship <laughs> built really fast. That's awesome. Because of the frequency, the proximity. And, and, and that is why I believe it's going to be challenged with remote because you, you don't have that. And you don't think if you guys want to talk every day on the phone, you could achieve that same thing? No. That's a great point. Building, building a relationship with somebody over a phone yeah. and us hanging out with each other and me looking at all the little things you do, how you play with your hair, mm -hmm. how you smile, or how I say things and I get to see you react to them. Like, like that is what helps you understand a person. And, and you can't get that remotely. Now, there's a new uh, technology uh, that's coming out uh, that, is, that sounds exciting. Uh, it's called Roam. Um, I was watching CNBC the other day and, and the guy basically built it uh, because Zoom is probably the main remote tool right now, tech tool. Right. Yeah. Um, but Zoom was never built for remote work. Zoom was built for video conferences. And so what he did is he built this platform that's built for remote work. So there's a dashboard, you have your team on there. You know, the, the big thing that, 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 rem that in person gives you is you can just go pop in, you know, you pop in, yeah. Hey, what's going on? Or Hey, yeah. look over, Hey, Hey, Rhett, you know, what's going on with this funnel over here? Blah, blah, blah. What's this ad set? Um, I can just do that right out the window of my office. And, and, and with this platform that they're building, and I just saw a brief clip of it. And I guess the guy, he's a, he's a, tech guy and he had a couple big exits before or something. Um, but he's got this, this tool that looks like, like the dashboard looks awesome. Like you can see people online, you can pop in. I don't know if they had the camera up the whole time, but you literally pop into their office and say, Hey, you know, I was looking at this thing over here and then you can pop out. And so it's a, it's a tool built for remote work. So I think that there's always going to be, I mean, look at Elon Musk. Like he's like remote work is over at Twitter. I want people there. I love that. Like I, I, I love, I love, I love people in here. That. I love being able to walk into the room yeah. and go, "Come on, guys, let's go!" And then, oh yeah, 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 yeah. everybody gets. We well, got to think. He built Tesla. He built. He built um, SpaceX. You know, I mean, the, the I know he's getting a lot of heat right now, but the guy clearly, if he can build a space company, you think PayPal, he might, PayPal Solar City. SpaceX, he might Tesla, be able to deal the guy, with guy everything social media. Everything the guy touches works. Yeah. So it's like and and he's not a fan of, of remote work. So, you know, well, they Grant's them. not a Grant's not a fan of remote work, but he's getting like I've had to start building remote in some areas like mm -hmm. marketing and and again, it's it's tougher to build culture there and and like you probably didn't even know. We have probably 35 people that are remote, but it's not a primary it's not a primary uh, recruiting mechanism for us yet. Mm. But I think once once we can figure that out, like once we can figure that out, it's gonna be like, I think we can get to six, 700 employees. Wow, wow. Mm -hmm. Dude, this was super insightful, super insightful. I, I just, lo I loved hearing about just how you guys, one of my biggest takeaways was listen if you get rid of all of this and you just pick up the damn phone yeah you can build a million dollar business no doubt that's that's mm -hmm. like a big a big huge takeaway for me like that alone you know and then of course selling them something that helps them mm -hmm. calling them on the phone hey you know thank you for getting this um you're gonna love it we've had a lot of success with it quick question qualifying question yeah you know quick question 
uh, what is this? What's that? How mm-hmm. much weight are you trying to lose? Mm-hmm. How many salespeople do you have? How long have you been struggling with mm-hmm. this? Whatever. And then just going into it. I think I, I, I think a lot of people who sell online products, they do not do that. They don't. They definitely don't cold call. And they don't call their customers. Mm-hmm. They just don't call. Yeah. So I, I'm going to take that away because I've always been inbound, man. Yeah. I've built multi-million dollar business off of – I, I put out a video and I go, ha ha ha, and yeah. they book a call and they get on the phone yeah, yeah. and you know, like that's, and it's just, that's been the whole thing. But yeah. the, the idea of go, of reaching out, you're right. There's so much more in the drum. Yeah. And this has inspired me to go, go rip and open that drum. Yeah. So thank you, sir, man. You got I it, appreciate man. Yeah. It. It's a pleasure. Jerry Glant.